Completion of this program does not deem you competent or qualified to operate a forklift. As per OSHA, your employer must ensure your competency to operate a forklift. This forklift safety video covers guidance that applies to many types of forklifts. In no way does this safety video cover every type of situation or hazard that may be encountered when operating forklifts. This training program shall not be used as a sole source of safety training. Always refer to the operator's manual of the specific make and model you are operating for complete safety rules and operating instructions. This safety video is intended to be used in conjunction with the complete forklift operator safety training program, which includes this video, a safety guide, a written theory test, and a hands-on practical evaluation. Regardless of your experience as an operator, safety is the most important aspect of operating your machine every day. As an operator, good judgment, control, and caution will determine the safety of you and your coworkers. This safety training class is designed to help you know and understand your responsibility as an operator, the hazards associated with operating this type of equipment, and help you identify and avoid these hazards. Hi, my name is Jake Kidd. I'm a trainer with Sunstate Equipment. Thank you for attending this safety training class today. Let me start with a question. Why are you here today? Here's why. Your employer and Sunstate Equipment care greatly about your safety and the safety of all your coworkers. And we want to ensure each and every one of you goes home safely each day to your family. Thanks, Jake. To ensure that we all do make it home safely, let's begin by letting you know the key points of this safety training video. Introduction to Forklift Safety Training. Forklift Stability Principles, Operator's Responsibilities, Safely Operating the Forklift, Additional Safety Practices. Sadly, accidents occur far too often with forklifts. According to the Department of Labor, there are an average of over 20,000 serious injuries and over 100 fatalities due to forklift accidents reported each year. Nearly 70% of these accidents happen at construction and industrial workplaces. According to industry safety experts, most accidents are caused by some form of operator error. These same safety experts agree that the number one factor in preventing forklift accidents is proper safety training. The most common types of forklift accidents are tip overs, forklift struck something, forklift ran off dock, Worker pinned between objects. Workers struck by forklift. Workers struck by material. Due to this high number of serious and fatal forklift accidents, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, revised their original 1972 regulation on forklift safety. This revision, which became effective in 1999, defines what the content of training needs to be, how to implement a training program, and who is responsible for training. Got some key points in it. Four very important points to know and understand directly from the OSHA regulation that impacts you and your employer are Prior to permitting an employee to operate a powered industrial truck, except for training purposes, the employer shall ensure that each operator has successfully completed the training required. The employer shall ensure that each powered industrial truck operator is competent to operate a powered industrial truck safely, as demonstrated by the successful completion of the training and evaluation specified. The employer shall certify that each operator has been trained and evaluated as required by OSHA. The certification shall include the name of the operator, the date of the training, the date of the evaluations, and the identity of the person performing the training and or evaluation. An evaluation of each powered industrial truck operator's performance shall be conducted at least once every three years. We'll go over it after the video. As per OSHA, this training must consist of a combination of formal instruction and practical training. Most training organizations issue a wallet card with all the OSHA required information on it in order to certify the operator has completed forklift training. Once you receive your wallet card showing your proof of training, you will notice that it has an expiration date on it. As we just read, each operator must be evaluated every three years. OSHA states that refresher training is required whenever an operator demonstrates a deficiency in the safe operation of the forklift, as outlined in OSHA 1910.178L43, which states, 
the operator has been observed to operate the vehicle in an unsafe manner. The operator has been involved in an accident or near-miss incident. The operator has received an evaluation that reveals that the operator is not operating the truck safely. The operator is assigned to operate a different type of truck. A condition in the workplace changes in a manner that could affect safe operation of the truck. It is the responsibility of you and your employer to ensure all aspects of the required training remain current. As an operator, it's your responsibility to have your proof of training with you at all times and be able to present it to your employer, job site safety director, or OSHA inspector upon request. With that said, forklift safety is extremely important and one of the primary goals of this training class is to help you identify and avoid the hazards with operating any type of forklift so that you and your coworkers go home safely each day. Here's an overview of the forklift safety training class and what will be expected of you. Watch this forklift safety training video. There will be quizzes within the video to help you retain important information. Your qualified instructor will review some of the key points from the handbook you received at the beginning of class. You will take a forklift theory test on the material covered in the video. Your qualified instructor will grade the theory test to ensure a passing grade. If passed, you will proceed with the forklift practical test. Under the direction of a qualified person, your trainer, the trainee shall operate the forklift for a sufficient period of time to demonstrate proficiency in the actual operation of the forklift. OSHA defines a qualified person as one who, by possession of a recognized degree, certificate, or professional standing, or by extensive knowledge, training, and experience, has successfully demonstrated his or her ability to solve or resolve problems related to the subject matter, the work, or the project. If you pass the practical test, you will be issued a certificate of completion as temporary proof of training until your permanent wallet card is sent to your employer. This forklift safety video covers guidance that applies to many types of forklifts. In no way does it cover every type of situation or hazard you may encounter when operating these types of machines. As an operator, you are required to familiarize yourself with any forklift you may be asked to operate. What this means is that prior to operation, you must locate, read, and understand the operator's manual. Read, understand, and obey all safety decals. Failure to do this on every forklift you may operate could result in serious injury or death. Some of these safety symbols and their meanings are danger. These decals are colored red and means if the danger is not avoided, it will cause death or serious injury. Warning. These decals will be colored orange and means if the warning is not heeded, it will cause death or serious injury. Caution. These decals will be colored yellow and means if the precaution is not taken, it may cause minor or moderate injury. Know and understand the location and function of all controls and levers of the forklift. Forklifts come in many shapes and sizes and have many unique characteristics that allow them to perform many functions at your workplace. They're designed to lift, carry, and place loads by people of various occupations, such as contractors and industrial workers. OSHA has divided forklifts into seven different classifications, and they are Class 1, Electric Motor Rider Forklifts, Class 2, Electric Motor Narrow Aisle Forklifts, Class 3, Electric Motor Hand or Hand Rider Forklifts, Class 4, Internal Combustion Engine Forklifts with Solid Cushion Tires, Class 5, internal combustion engine forklifts with pneumatic tires. Class 6, electric or internal combustion engine tractors. Class 7, rough terrain forklift trucks. In this forklift safety training video, we will concentrate on general operating characteristics, along with identifying and avoiding hazards associated with class four and five warehouse forklifts and class seven rough terrain forklifts. The Class 4 and 5 warehouse forklift has a narrow wheelbase and small tires. Despite its small size, this forklift is very heavy. It has a vertical mast, 
and is designed to navigate the narrow aisles of a warehouse. These forklifts should only be operated on smooth, level surfaces like concrete and asphalt. The Class 7 vertical mast rough terrain forklift has a wide wheelbase that helps with its stability when working on rougher terrain. This forklift is used on construction sites to lift and haul heavy loads. The Class 7 telescopic rough terrain forklift has a low profile appearance and a long horizontal boom. It has a wide wheelbase and some manufacturers offer frame leveling that allows it to maneuver well in rough and uneven terrain. Its horizontal mast allows it to not only lift, but to reach out over obstacles, making this forklift ideal for construction sites. As we continue to learn about different types of forklifts and their qualities, it's also very important to understand the difference between driving an automobile and operating a forklift. Even though it seems they operate in the same manner, they're very different. Some of these key differences are automobiles steer from the front axle. Most forklifts steer from the rear axle. Automobiles weight ranges from 3,000 to 5,000 pounds. Forklifts weight ranges from 9,000 to over 100,000 pounds. Automobiles can travel over 70 plus miles per hour. Forklifts travel under 20 miles per hour. Automobiles are low to the ground and remain stable. Forklifts have moving parts and loads that may cause them to be unstable and cause tip-overs. Additional comparisons between automobiles and forklifts are listed in your handbook. We just mentioned that at times a forklift may be unstable. Whether it's an electric forklift or a 12,000-pound telescopic forklift, all forklifts are engineered with the same basic principles of stability. Forklifts operate under the fulcrum principle. The engine and heavy metal parts counterbalance the weight of the load. Three key definitions to understand are center of gravity, the point within a forklift where there is equal weight all around it. Stability triangle, the area on a forklift in which the load must be suspended in order for the forklift not to tip. The vehicle's center of gravity is within the stability triangle. Fulcrum, the point on the truck which balances the weight of the truck and the weight of the load being carried. The fulcrum is the front axle. A forklift has three points of stability, the two front tires and the pivot point on the rear axle. If you draw a line between the two front tires to the pivot point on the rear axle and back again, you get that forklift stability triangle. As you raise and lower loads, make quick turns, and tilt the mast, the center of gravity shifts inside the stability triangle. The center of gravity must remain inside this triangle or the forklift will turn over. The best way to visualize a forklift stability is to create a stability pyramid. Start with the three points I've just mentioned. The top point of the pyramid is located just above the operator's head, lined up with the top of the mast. Draw a line from each of the three original points to this new fourth point to create a stability pyramid. But that fourth point is not stationary. The stability pyramid grows taller, shrinks, and skews as the operator raises and lowers the load and adjusts the mast. When the forks are kept low, the stability pyramid is short and squat, making it relatively stable. Raising the forks elongates the stability pyramid, making it tall, skinny, and much easier to tip over. The center of gravity rises as the load rises and now needs to shift only a short distance to get outside the narrowing top of the pyramid, which would cause a tip over, especially if the machine is moving. All forklifts have speed, weight, and load limitations. It is your job to operate each forklift within the boundaries of its design and limitations. By understanding this forklift stability principle will help ensure safe forklift operation. Before we move on to your first quiz, let's review some of the primary objectives that we discussed in this first section. First, we talked about the most common types of forklift accidents and the importance and need for proper forklift safety training. Next, we learned the OSHA regulations regarding forklift safety and training. We also learned the importance of forklift familiarization and that prior to operation, you must locate, read, and understand the operator's manual, obey all safety decals, and know the meaning of the danger, warning, and caution symbols.
in that you must also know and understand the location and function of all controls of the specific forklift you are operating. We discussed the differences between automobiles and forklifts. Lastly, we spoke of the forklift stability principles, which include the center of gravity, the stability triangle, the stability pyramid, and the fulcrum point. Remember, by understanding your forklift stability principles, we will help ensure a safe forklift operation. Now, let's move on to the first quiz. Per OSHA and is lined out in the manufacturer's operator's manual. Before use, you as an operator must perform certain inspections on a daily basis and before each shift. These inspections are a workplace inspection, a pre-start inspection. Some manufacturer's operator's manual may also refer to this as a pre-operation inspection or pre-use inspection and a function test. Your workplace is busy with other moving vehicles, machinery, and coworkers. This constant activity presents potential risks and hazards. By being aware of these risks and hazards before operating your forklift, you may avoid a serious accident and injury. This best practice of a workplace inspection will also help greatly with selecting the proper type of forklift to perform your task. Some of the potential risks and hazards to be aware of are overhead obstructions, such as power lines, light fixtures, cranes, roll-up doors, piping, or fire sprinkler systems. Surface conditions must also be inspected, such as open excavations, changes in grades, loading docks, holes covered by plywood, water or ice, potholes, workplace debris, and loose, soft, or wet ground. Inspection of the overall work environment where you will be operating your forklift must take place, such as vehicle and construction machinery traffic, the work location of coworkers, pedestrian traffic, and any unique situations like blind corners. A thorough inspection of any hazardous environment at your workplace must be carried out also. Some things to consider are the location of hazardous chemical storage, poor ventilation areas, and extremely loud or noisy work areas. In order to perform a proper pre-start inspection, there are three very important things you must know and do first. Locate the operator's manual. It is a permanent part of the forklift. The responsibility is yours as an operator to read it before you operate, as it contains all the checkpoints and safety items to inspect the specific forklift you will be operating. Read, understand, and obey all safety decals. As we discussed earlier in the video, these decals display important warnings in order to prevent serious injury or death. Wear your personal protection equipment, or PPE, such as a hard hat, safety glasses, work gloves, and a safety vest. 
We will divide our pre-start inspection into two segments. The first will be on the ground, doing a walk-around inspection. Then we will move into the operator's compartment of the forklift to complete the pre-start inspection. For the purpose of this video, we will show key points on both a Class 5 warehouse forklift and a Class 7 telescopic forklift. Here are some things to look at during the walk-around segment. Inspect the tires. Look for damage to the rims, large chunks from the tires, excessive wear, and proper inflation. Check for any leaks in or around the engine compartment or near cylinders and hydraulic lines. Also, check hoses, clamps, and wiring for proper wear. Check the battery for any leaks, and be sure all battery cables, terminals, and clamps are in good condition. Inspect all metal parts, such as the forks, mast assembly, overhead guard, and welds for any cracks or excessive wear. Inspect the lifting chains for equal tension. Inspect the data plate or lifting chart and all safety decals for damage and readability. Inspect handholds and steps and be sure no damage is seen. Inspect any compartment doors for damage and be sure they latch properly. If so equipped, inspect the propane tank. Be sure it's properly seated on the locator pin. Check all valves and hoses for leaks and proper tightness. Inspect any working lights on the forklift for broken glass or any other damage. Check all fluid levels, such as motor oil, hydraulic fluid, and engine coolant. Please know that daily routine maintenance is the responsibility of the operator. Be sure to always wear your PPE when performing this part of the pre-start inspection. As you approach the operator's compartment, inspect the seat belt for any tears or excessive wear, and be sure it retracts properly. Now it's time to enter the operator's compartment. As we prepare to do this, there are two very important safety reminders to go over first. Handholds and steps are provided for safe entry. Properly enter the operator's compartment by facing the machine and using the three-point contact method, which means two hands and one foot, or one hand and two feet are in contact with the machine when entering or exiting. And buckle up. You as the operator are to wear your seatbelt at all times when operating any type of forklift. Check your visibility and mirrors to be sure you can see clearly in all directions. Know and understand the forklift controls and instrumentation, what each does, and how it works. Refer to your forklift's operator's manual for the complete list of all instrumentation and its function. Check the lights, flashers, and beacons if your forklift is equipped with these. Check the horn. It must be able to be heard over the engine and is used frequently to warn others of your presence. Check that the transmission and controls are in neutral and the parking brake is set before starting the engine. Check the parking brake. Be sure it holds in gear while idling. Start slowly and test the brakes. Check the steering for excessive play. Now let's test each function of the forklift. Raise and lower the mast. Be sure it moves smoothly. Ensure tilt functions are working. Ensure side shift functions are working. On a telescopic forklift, extend the boom out and in. Ensure outriggers raise and lower properly if equipped. Ensure cab leveling works properly if equipped. If during the pre-start inspection or function test you notice any damages, leaks, or malfunctions, please notify your supervisor and immediately tag the machine and remove the key so no one attempts to operate it until all repairs have been made by authorized personnel. In Section 2, the primary objectives we discussed were the three items that OSHA requires you as an operator to do daily prior to using your forklift. First is performing a workplace inspection in order to recognize and avoid hazards before use. Second is performing a pre-start inspection by visually looking at your forklift to be sure there are no issues before use. And third is the function test in which you operate each function to ensure they work properly.
Please remember that if any damage, leaks, or malfunctions are recognized, you must tag the machine with a do not operate tag and remove the key so no one attempts to operate an unsafe forklift. When exiting or entering your forklift, using the three-point contact method was demonstrated for safe entry, and the most important safety practice as a forklift operator is to always wear your seatbelt whenever you operate your forklift. Now, let's move on to quiz number two. Now let's discuss some safe procedures as you are moving and driving your forklift. Start slowly and operate the vehicle smoothly with no jerky movements that could cause the load to shift. Transport the load as low as possible and use the back tilt function to prevent the load from sliding forward. On telescoping forklifts, travel slowly with boom retracted and be ready with frame tilt if you encounter a side slope. If you need to cross an obstacle like railroad tracks, cross them diagonally to avoid spilling or shifting the load. When descending a hill, use low gear and let the engine assist the brakes. Watch the vehicle's rear end swing, especially when turning near pedestrians or objects. Remember, for the most part, warehouse and vertical mast forklifts steer with their back wheels this means as you turn, the heavy rear end of the machine swings out and could easily damage anything it comes in contact with and cause serious injuries to pedestrians. A telescoping forklift may have multiple steering options, such as two-wheel, four-wheel, and crab. Be sure that you know which is selected and keep a space cushion around the machine. Always look in the direction of your travel. When in reverse, Turn your body so you can clearly see your path of travel. Always keep arms, legs, and other body parts within the operator's compartment to prevent accidental injury. When driving around blind corners, honk your horn to make other vehicles and pedestrians aware of your presence. Observe all traffic regulations at your workplace, such as speed limits, safe following distances, and rules regarding stunt driving and horseplay. Yield the right of way to any emergency vehicles in such situations. If you are using a warehouse forklift to unload a semi-trailer or a railroad car, inspect the floor of the trailer to be sure it will support the weight of the forklift and the load. Be sure any dock or crossing plate is properly rated for the weight of the forklift and the load combined. Always chalk the tires and use a dock locking device, even if the driver has set the parking brake. If the truck is unattached from the trailer, consider the use of a fixed trailer jack to help support the weight of the forklift and the load. Chalk the wheels on a railroad car, especially when crossing a dock plate to unload. Use extra caution around loading docks. Leave some extra space between the edge of the dock and the forklift to minimize any danger of falling. Never allow riders. Forklifts were designed for only one occupant, which is you, the operator. As an operator, it's your responsibility to keep passengers off the forklift. 
scan your path of travel. Watch for hazards and other vehicles. Use extra caution around pedestrians. Always allow them the right of way in order to avoid an accident and injury. Never drive up to anyone standing in front of a fixed object. Instead, pull up to them parallel and always shut off the engine. Failure of operators and pedestrians alike to pay attention to one another may cause a serious injury. Avoid sloping ground if possible and do not drive on excessively steep slopes. When ascending or descending a slope with a load, always keep the load upgrade. This means traveling in reverse down the slope and forward going up. When ascending or descending a slope without a load, travel in reverse up the slope and travel forward coming down. Always avoid turning on a slope. It could cause a tip over. Drive slow and careful, never speed. A forklift can also tip over if you attempt to turn at high rates of speed. If you feel the vehicle tipping, stay in your seat, brace yourself, lean away from the impact, do not jump. Since normal tendency is to jump downward, you'll land on the ground in the path of the overhead guard and will be crushed. The operator's compartment is designed to help keep you safe as long as you remain in your seat and your seat belt is properly fastened. Now let's talk about some special situations you will find helpful. When entering a building with a machine, overhead clearance should be checked to avoid any damage to buildings or overhead structures. Also, allow time for your eyes to adjust to different lighting. Never use a forklift for towing unless you have a manufacturer's approved attachment. The proper attachment for towing slides over both forks and is held in place by a chain around the fork carriage. Never cut a hole in a fork. It weakens the fork and makes it more likely to bend or break. Never suspend a load from the forks. The only way you can use a forklift to suspend a load is with an approved attachment from the forklift's manufacturer. In order to continually operate your forklift safely, here are some of the primary objectives discussed in Section 3. A forklift has various steering modes, such as rear wheel, four wheel, and crab. When you're driving your forklift at your workplace, please remember, never allow riders. Always face the direction you're traveling. Use caution when driving on slopes. Drive slow and never speed. Use extra caution around pedestrians. And when you drive with a load on your forks, please carry the load as low to the ground as possible and have it tilted back to keep it secure. Now, let's move on to quiz number three. The next thing we want to discuss are the fundamentals of lifting and placing a load with a forklift. 
please remember that all forklifts have speed, weight, and load limitations. It is your job to operate each forklift within the boundaries of its design and limitations. Understanding these forklift stability principles will help ensure safe forklift operation while lifting and placing loads. And also important is no modifications or additions which affect capacity or safe operation may be done to a forklift without written approval from the forklift manufacturer. Always inspect the material for stability and secure the load prior to lifting. When lifting loads, insert the forks all the way. Place heavy items and mixed loads near the fork backrest, as this minimizes the risk of the load falling rearward. Also, be sure the proper backrest is on the forklift for the type of loads to be placed. Keep helpers and other workers away from the load when lifting, and never allow anyone to walk or stand under a raised load. If your load obstructs your forward view, travel in reverse with the load trailing and consider the use of a spotter. Lifting capacities are based on load center. The most common load center is 24 inches. A standard 48 by 48 pallet has a 24 inch load center. A longer load center will decrease the lifting capacity of the forklift. Let's take a moment to discuss how data plates and load charts really work. Whether you're operating a vertical mast forklift or a telescopic forklift, Always check the data plate or lifting chart to see how much weight a machine can safely lift and how high it can safely lift it. Straight mast and warehouse style forklifts must have a metal data plate attached to the machine. The data plate lists the weight of the forklift and the maximum weights and heights that the forklift is capable of lifting at various load centers. However, all telescopic forklifts use a capacity or load chart to determine how much weight the machine can safely handle vertically and horizontally through its entire range of motion. You must know the length, angle, and weight of the load to be lifted and placed. The length refers to the distance your load is to be placed. The angle refers to the height of the structure where your load is to be placed. The weight refers to the weight of the load being lifted. On the forklift, there will be two indicators that correspond with the machine's lifting chart. The first indicator is a set of boom extend markings, which are typically a row of numbers or letters on the intermediate section of the boom. As the boom is extended, boom extend markings will appear one by one on the left side of the boom, where they are visible to the operator. The second indicator found on the forklift is the boom angle indicator, which is located on the left side of the outer boom again, visible to the operator. It indicates the current angle of the boom as it's raised. These indicators correspond with the markings on the load chart and help the operator to ensure that the machine is being used safely. Let's take a closer look at the load chart. The basic underlying chart is a graph broken down into measurements for distance and height. Notice that with forklifts, the distance is measured from the vehicle's front tires. Next, the vehicle's range of motion is indicated by a shaded area on the graph. The range of motion is then divided into sections, and each one is marked with a weight capacity. Notice that the weight capacity decreases the farther the forklift reaches out. If the operator keeps the load in close, the forklift can lift the full capacity, 6,000 pounds in this case, all the way to its maximum height of 42 feet by first raising the load all the way up and then extending the boom. If the boom is extended all the way out before lifting the load, the machine's lifting capacity is reduced to 1,400 pounds. Did you notice that the shaded areas on the chart representing changes in capacity don't perfectly align with the lines on the graph? It's for this reason that manufacturers will often mark these sections with additional lines, giving the operator an exact measurement. Also, did you notice the boom extend markings, A, Bs, and Cs in this case? that appear on the side of the boom as it was extended? These markings are represented on the chart as blue arced lines. For example, when the letter A first appears, it means that the boom is at the point of the boom extension corresponding to the arc of line A on the chart. The operator can quickly look at the boom and determine which section of the chart they need to reference. Without these markings, it would be difficult to determine from the driver's seat whether the load was extended 15 feet or 18 feet. 
and as you can see, these minute details can make a substantial difference in the machine's capacity. The final piece of the load chart is the boom angle lines, listed here in red. These angles crisscross the blue boom extend lines forming a curved grid. This grid allows the operator to quickly reference both the boom angle indicator and the visible boom extend markings to determine the exact position of the load as it corresponds to the load chart. Various attachment options exist for forklifts. Only attachments authorized by the manufacturer are to be used on a forklift. You must never use any handmade type of attachment, as no modification affecting capacity and safe operation is to be used without the manufacturer's written approval. A few common attachments are fork extensions, trash hoppers, lifting hooks, truss booms, material buckets, and man baskets. As a forklift operator, you must know the weight of any forklift attachment you may be using. This weight is now part of your load and therefore decreases the forklift's lifting capacity. When using a forklift attachment, you must be sure it is properly attached as per the manufacturer's instructions and perform a function test prior to using it under a load. Since we just mentioned a man basket, please understand that forklifts are not designed to lift people without the use of an OSHA-approved man basket that is attached to the fork carriage. And the operator must remain at the controls while the basket is raised. When lifting people, the maximum lifting capacity is reduced to one-third of the original capacity. On telescopic forklifts, a separate load chart exists for each available approved attachment. You must read the manufacturer's data plate on any attachment that may be used to prevent any injury, accident, or death. If no data plate exists, the user must request the forklift to be marked to identify the combined weight of the forklift and the attachment. When lifting a load with a warehouse or vertical mast forklift, check the area to make sure that the surface will support the full weight of the machine and the load and that the structure that you are landing the load on can support the weight safely. Position the machine on level ground as close to the landing point as possible with the load held low. On models equipped with side shift, make sure the forks are centered before lifting. Set the parking brake. Slowly and carefully raise the load, but maintain a slight back tilt to cradle the load. Feather the controls. Never move the levers all the way to the stops unless you want fast and full function. Continue to lift until the load is slightly higher than the landing point. Once the load is higher than the landing point, carefully drive forward to place the load directly over the landing point. Tilt the load only after it is over the landing point and ready to be placed. Gently lower the load until the forks are free and parallel to the landing surface so that they can be easily retracted. Lower the forks to traveling height before moving the machine. When lifting a load with a telescopic forklift, Check the area to make sure that the surface will support the full weight of the machine and the load and that the structure that you are landing the load on can support the weight safely. Position the vehicle so that the load can be placed without driving it into place. Industry best practice says to make every effort not to drive a telescopic handler with the boom raised. Place the transmission in neutral and set the parking brake. Level the vehicle before lifting. Never use the frame tilt while the boom is raised. This can cause a tip over. Be sure to deploy the outriggers of your forklift if so equipped. Use the boom's telescoping action and forward movement to gently place the load. Feather the controls. 
never move the levers all the way to the stops unless you want fast and full function. Reverse this procedure to carefully withdraw the forks. Lower the boom before you back away. As a recap to this key point on the fundamentals of lifting and placing loads, there is an important statement we've said before, and it merits repeating, and that is that all forklifts have speed, weight, and load limitations. It is your job to operate each forklift within the boundaries of its design and limitations. Understanding these forklift stability principles will help ensure safe forklift operation while lifting and placing loads. The primary objectives when lifting and placing loads discussed in Section 4 will help keep you and your coworkers safe. Regardless the type of forklift you're operating, you must always inspect the material that you need to lift and place to be sure your forklift is capable of handling the load. We also learned that forklift load specifications require that the load is centered on the forklifts. This is known as the load center, and the most common load center is 24 inches. A data plate provides information on most vertical mast forklifts. Some of the key data displayed is the weight of the machine, the lifting weight, and the lifting height that the forklift is capable of. Because a telescopic forklift extends horizontally and vertically, a load chart is used. Therefore, when determining load placement, it's important to know the length, angle, and weight of your load. Your forklift's load chart corresponds with the boom extend markings and boom angle indicator in order to know that your forklift can safely handle the load. Forklift attachments were mentioned, and two important facts to remember are that they become a part of the load and decrease the forklift's lifting capacity, and you must only use manufacturer-approved attachments. When lifting and placing the load, it is important to be sure the surface area can support the weight of the load. Once your load has been safely placed and before traveling, remember, lower the forks to traveling height. Now, let's move on to quiz number four. The following safety guidelines should be followed when refueling or charging the batteries on your forklift. Shut down the engine. Wear your PPE, especially around batteries in case of an acid leak. Never smoke in any designated refueling or battery charging area. Only refuel or recharge batteries in a well-ventilated area free of flame, sparks, or other hazards that may cause fire or explosion. Only refill propane fuel if you are trained to do so. Obey all cleanup, safe containment, and disposal procedures. When it's time to park your forklift, please practice this shutdown sequence. Choose solid level ground. Lower forks. Place transmission in neutral. Set the parking brake. Turn it off and remove the key to prevent any unauthorized use. Never leave the operator's compartment with the engine running. 
Use wheel chocks if you must park on an incline. Secure any compartment doors to deter vandalism or theft. Don't let the forklift become a hazard. Never block any pathways, fire equipment, doors, or exits. If you perform any type of maintenance on a forklift, here are some rules to help keep you safe. Always set the parking brake. Lower the forks to the ground to take unwanted pressure off of the hydraulic system. Chalk the wheels. When lifting the forklift, use a jack that is rated to do so. Although some forklifts are small, they are much heavier than they appear due to the heavy counterweight on the rear. Once it is raised, use a jack stand that is also rated for the weight, just in case the jack was to fail. Do not disable any signaling or warning devices that are required by law. Always wear eye or face protection and gloves around batteries. Know that all parts of any forklift requiring replacement shall be replaced only by parts equivalent as to safety with those in the original design. Please consider the following guidance in case of an emergency at your workplace. Know where all workplace first aid kits are kept. Know the address of your workplace in order to assist first responders should you ever need to call 911. Consider having a wallet card of all emergency contact phone numbers at your workplace. The primary objective in Section 5 is additional safety practices as a forklift operator. When it's time to refuel or recharge the batteries on your forklift, please always remember to shut the engine off, wear the proper PPE, and never smoke in any refueling or recharging area. When it's time to park and shut down your forklift at the end of your shift, choose solid level ground, and remember to lower the forks all the way to the ground and set the parking brake. Once this is done, it's time to turn off the machine and remove the key to prevent any unauthorized use. When performing forklift maintenance, the safety practices we mentioned were lowering the forks to the ground and setting the parking brake before working on the machine. During maintenance, you must wear the proper PPE and never disable any warning devices. Finally, we spoke of accidents at the workplace, and when a workplace emergency does arise, it is very helpful to know the location of first aid kits and the address of your workplace. The last safety practice we discussed was keeping a current list of emergency phone numbers for your workplace. Now, let's move on to quiz number five. Thank you for taking the time to better understand the hazards associated with operating this type of equipment. Our hope here at Sunstate Equipment is for each of you to identify and avoid these hazards so you and your coworkers go home safely to your loved ones each day. Now it's time to take the written test on the theories covered in this video. Once the test is graded and a passing score is verified, you will head outside to perform a practical, hands-on evaluation. Thank you and good luck.